don't be scared. Because this can seem like a scary hobby. There's so many options and combinations. You know, you want to get into these headphones, you need like amps and DACs and then quiet rooms will appreciate them in. Plus, if you search best headphones 2021, you get some big smelly price tags and just assume that it's a hobby you can't access unless you invested in Dogecoin. You can see I've been chewing my nails, right? I've been a hodler since five cents. I want to pay my student debts with Dogecoin. Come, go to the moon already. But what I have to show you today is nothing new to be honest. I mean, everything I'm going to show you are well-known cheap heroes in the headphone world. So this is my video to get people off the ground, to get you out of your dirty buds and listen to S Club 7 like a budget conscious kick. But I'm going to be spewing a lot of information at you and like to help it make sense, we must enter boring time. Since we're comparing headphones here, we need an audio referee. And mate, you know who it is. It's literally the headphones on the table before. It's the Herdo 600s by all mate uh, sense. So like different headphones need different amounts of power to run them. It's like some cars need more fuel to go faster or to be bigger. It's a super layman's terms, right? And like there are other factors like sensitivity and such, but the more ohms, the harder they are, the power. Like Apple Dirty Buds, they're like 40 ohms. They run out of anything. MacBook, smart fridge, you know, your dog. Professional headphones are like 80 to 120 ohms. Look, 80 isn't too bad, but any more than that, you want to be thinking about an amplifier to boost the signal. HD 600s, these are 300 ohms. You bet your left crumpet you want an amp for these. But nearly everything I have to show you is 32 ohms and under. Nice and easy to run. Most of these headphones I'll show you have a graph like this. It basically shows you the raw sound. Like down here is the super sub bass, regular bass is here. The mids, where literally three quarters of the music lives, like guitar, vocals, snare drums, pianos, trumpets, crumpets, mate, they all live here. And then like the top end, which is cymbals, percussion, tss, tss, noises, ambience. And the higher the line, the louder that section of the music is. So if the mids are really low, the vocals can seem really distant. You know, ideally you want the line to be flat, but don't judge purely on these graphs as they don't show distortion or soundstage, i.e. how 3D and wide they feel, it's just a point of reference. I've recorded most of these on my freakish ears on a stand. Again, just a point of reference, you know, you won't experience the soundstage. It's being played through your speakers or smart fridge, you know, so it'll sound like them for the most part while also being compressed on YouTube. I looked into head acoustics for like a proper headphone recording rig. They cost about a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Even if my Dogecoin went to five bucks each, like, I, yeah, that's too much. These were like 300 bucks. So, you know, don't take it too seriously. So to demo how this would go down while I was in JB Hi-Fi, I found these studio headphones. This studio, $19. And they're, whew, they're just, uh, yeah, lovely. believe they sound hideous and don't even fit properly. Like, there's no swivel at all. Our ears point forward, so they don't stick out sideways, so these don't swivel at all. It's almost like they don't fit human beings. Boring time is over, let's get into it. Starting off, this is easily one of the most requested headphones review, apart from Skull Candy Crushers. Mate, it's the Super Lux HD 681s. It's happening, guys. I got these for about 30 US bucks. And if you're wondering how they make these so cheap, I need to show you these. AKG K2 240s. First released in like the late 70s and still made today. Only these are actual vintage ones, like new ones are made in China and they're like 80 ohms. Ooh, made in Austria and 600 ohms. <laughs> These are meant to be plugged into a full-blown mixing desk, let alone an amp. Do you see a resemblance? The word blatant comes to mind. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. Even the ear cups are the same design. This little pressed flat spot, it's the same. <laughs> oh man, it saves a lot of money coming up with your own chassis, I suppose. Now, these really do feel cheap, and uh, you see that indentation there? Even review copies online for artings want or have this because they just sandwich it in between a piece of plastic and then shrink wrap it. It's the cheapest packaging I've ever experienced, and it leaves these cuts in the ear cups. But you know, that's how you make them cheap. So these are open backs, meaning they let all the noise in and they bleed out too. And if you don't know what headphone bleed is, uh, you know when you're sitting on the bus and the dude next to you is listening to music 
it. They're so loud, you swear you can hear every detail too. Well, that's headphone bleed. <laughs> Open backs do it naturally. It just means everyone will know you're listening to S Club 7. But it helps create the big wide 3D sound. These aren't crazy wide feeling, but like 30 bucks. Take a listen. So they got extra top end, but they've also got a bit of a bass bump as well. I mean, people call it the V sound, extra top and extra bottom. But for the spend, these are flippin' excellent. <laughs> no wonder people have been raving about these. These are genius if you work at schools and you need a room's worth of headphones that might be subjected to death by throwing yet still sound great. Cheap feeling, but strangely comfortable and like actual great sounding. So up next at about 50 US bucks, if you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you already know these mate, it's the Samson SR850s. Oh look, another AKG clone. <laughs> But compared to the Superluxes, they're built much better. I mean, it's still cheap plastic. They are cheap, but they've just got a slightly better finish to them. No indentation on here. The ear cups are way nicer. But other than that, it's the exact same, like, chassis design. The self-adjusting headband. Yeah. It's a very similar flavor to the Super Luxes, but I feel it's a little bit more balanced than the base. It has quite a roll off, so for like really super crazy low sub stuff, but these have a great wide sound, and I swear in person, I prefer these over the Super Luxes. It's when the graphs and like the, the cheap microphone with YouTube compression recordings don't really sell the whole thing. I think instruments just sounded better with these. The sound stage felt wider, and I just found them nicer on my head with the extra build quality. Yeah, makes sense. Spend a little more, get a little more. But the low end on the Super Lux would be more fun for most people though. But I mean, these are really fantastic cheap open backs. Hmm, quite a lot of AKG clones, eh? Imagine if AKG themselves made a cheaper headphone. Oh look, AKG K52s. Closed backs to represent those who don't want to broadcast their S Club 7 addictions. Only 45 US bucks these, and they're nicely made. I mean, obviously on the cheaper side, but this is metal and just really nice headband. Like, it's so plush and soft. Like, they're really understated, but I think they look good. So being closed backs, they don't have the big wide feel, but they do have extra bass. It's usually kind of the trade-off. It does feel sacrificed from the top end though, but hey, have a listen. It's got that little whoopty scoop in the top end there. But you know, it shows that the graphs can be pretty wild looking and still create conventionally nice sound. You know, people see some graphs and think that it will turn their music inside out and all the drums will turn into cat noises and soft farting or something. But you know, it's not that drastic. But like metal parts in a sub 50 set of cans, like that's pretty amazing. I mean, it's a shame AKG is dead and the corpse is owned by Samsung. Like designed in Vienna. Well, yeah, back in 2016, these first came out, which was the last year that the Vienna office was open. How sad. <laughs> I honestly prefer open backs, especially if I'm like looking to sit in a quiet room and really listen to something. I still think these sound great, but if I wanted isolation extra bass, I'd grab some of these. So I'm sorry I don't have graphs for these. The software that I'm using didn't include these, and I'll mention the software in a bit. And I'm sorry I don't have any recordings of these either, because my pleb spec recording rig isn't emulating a real human ear, so these just don't fit right. So I've talked about these before. The KZ, KSN, 
Pros, but also the KB Ear KS1s. And these both go for about 20 bucks a pair. I used to live out of in-ears as like they block the whole world out and they fit right in your pocket. Ultimate clothes backs, I suppose, full isolation. Both have extra bass and a little extra spark on the top end, but I think it's really tastefully done. And I think both of them fit really great. I mean, they're even the same shape, which makes sense. They're both designed to cram themselves in the same thing. Our ears, don't put them anywhere else. Removable cables too, so you can replace them or you can get a balance cable. So many tips available for these online too. Like, so they're fully customizable to your greasy head. And the cable is the part that goes up and around your ear. So you can go shopping and find an ear hook design that fits you. That's where the money is. The actual driver, like cables are cheap. And to show you how much they smack of value, look, they've even got microphones. I've got to yell into these. So like this one time, I'm like doing backflips in the backyard, which is totally sick because I, I didn't know I could do them. And I figured like, oh, I'm a total natural hash should like enter a competition. So like, I'm entering one tomorrow and like, I'm totally going to dominate, mate. You watch. So like, I'm at the backflip tournament, hey, and it's like super devastating. It, it turns out that no, I, I don't know how to do backflips, hey. Well, I thought backflips was just flipping your phone in your hand. And like, I thought I had a heap secret skill because people talk about how hard backflips are. It turns out I have no skills or talent at all, mate. I'm just, I'm sorry, mate. I'm just dealing with this right now. Take it, mate. Go. Oh, man. Both of these mics are fantastic. They're great. No complaints at all. You could easily have nice phone calls through these. I think the KBM mic is the best though. Just a little bit crispier. So never mind that they're bargains for the fact that they sound great and are fully customizable. And then the fact that they've got microphones as well. I honestly recommend both of these. Sound wise, I lean towards the KZs, but I really like how the KB is looking the white and the better microphone as well, if that's important to you. Well, I think these are genius headphones to just have in a drawer somewhere for the day that your Bluetooth cans are out of battery. Or if you're going traveling, and you know just the reliability of a cable like it's hard to beat and in my opinion pick the pair you like the look of to be honest because <laughs> i think they're both great so you know watching this video and hearing the hd 600s i bet you're thinking well like why don't they make a cheap stripped down pair of 600s to have like half the ohms and maybe cheaper pads and details but deliver the hd 600 flavor mate that would just sell like mad i can't believe they haven't done it uh well they have done it ages ago, and they do sell like mad. The HD 58X. So Mass Drop has a forum where audiophiles share stuff they like, stuff they hate, and basically Drop works in conjunction with major headphone makers to create special versions that reflect these requests. And basically they've taken the lessons they've learned over all these years to make a low cost entry version. Half the ohms, 150, like you still want an amp, I'll get to that, but the requirements are way easier. Like take a listen. Wow, it's close, isn't it? It's got plastic grills and the, and the plastic down here is cheaper. You know, like conventional headband foam, but it gives the HD 600 vibe. They squeeze a little bit, but honestly, it reminds me of a motorbike helmet. Like it feels like you're putting on equipment to do something cool. I, I, I like it. Cost wise, they're 170 US bucks, which sure, it's like three times the cost of all the other headphones here I know. But if you went to Sennheiser themselves and you wanted some HD 600s, they're asking 400 US bucks. And then you also need like a big powerful amplifier because 300 ohms and you know, it keeps getting more expensive. And so on that note, let me introduce to you my favorite audio nugget. So this is another one I've brought up before, but people keep asking about it. The Fio BTR5. Mine got karate chopped at some point. And like, I don't remember when or how. So, so there you go, it can survive a karate chop. And I'm very sorry for you. Two headphone jacks, that's more than one. For a bit of context to sell this guy, uh, the headphone output on a MacBook is like 45 milliwatts. I don't want to wear a set of in-ears at full volume out of a laptop for sure. Like, cause it's really, really loud. But the headphone jack on this guy is 80 milliwatts. <laughs> that, that's way stinkier. And this little headphone jack here, yeah, that's not for little music. That's a balanced output. Like, so it sends audio down both cables instead of just the one. And then there's phasing involved to remove background noise and whatever. But more importantly, that little headphone jack is 250 milliwatts. 
Woo! So you plug it in via USB-C and you can run your PC or laptop through it. This turns into your headphone jack now. But the party piece, it has Bluetooth. So you can pair your phone up to it, get Spotify or Tidal running and turn your audio file openbacks into wireless ones. I've run HD 600s right out of the standard headphone jack in this and I still love the sound. So the 58Xs get a cheap 2.5mm balance cable because look at this, it's the same cables as the HD 600s. That's, I'm so glad that they like made elements of it cheaper but left the awesome like customization parts of it like works with your computer works over bluetooth it's tiny and apart from being an amplifier it's a DAC digital analog converter you've got to turn the ones and zeros of digital music into something that can basically run through a co-hanger wire and basically it's got little processes in there that do that job dedicated to doing it and that really helps the sound i find the audio just has an extra layer to it over just say out of a phone or laptop I, even though honestly all the headphones I've shown you except for these are all 32 ohms and under so you don't need an amp but it still sounds better out of better equipment. 110 US bucks. Even if you've got big desktop amps at home I still recommend this and if you want to talk even more value yes it has a mic. So I, I'm still dealing with having like no skills or talents so it's like pretty crushing. I thought oh, it's worth a shot go speak to one of the officials and ask like does my flappy bird score help at all like is that put me up the standings and, and he said like I'm wasting his time but like I told him my score and he was like pretty impressed so like that stands for some it seems. Basically it turns your wired audio file headphones into wireless ones that can now make calls. Phone calls with these. I love you, Theo. <laughs> but there's a pair of headphones I need to address. If many people bring them up with me, they've been around since the 80s. The Cos. Porter Pros. There's a reason I haven't talked much about these. You know, lots of people love them, and I don't. <laughs> It's not that they sound bad, they are dark sounding, meaning that there's less top end detail. Now, people just assume that it's because I've played drums for 20 years and have worked as a musician this whole time, that my hearing must be completely destroyed, and that's why I like headphones like Grado's that have no bass and heaps of top end. I must be compensating for my awful thrashed ears. Never mind I was a student representative on OHS board at university and got the whole faculty into using reusable earplugs because I'm a die hard hearing protection advocate. I've been carrying hearing protection with me my my whole musician life since I was nine. I always knew to look after my ears, they're only good ones. But it's because of my drum background that I enjoy headphones with some top end detail to them. Cymbals, percussion, snare drums, ambient reverb, that's where all that stuff lives. Like instance, Britney Spears is toxic. Total banger. It's a bit trashy, but that bass line is just so good. And during the chorus, there's a subtle ride cymbal in the left ear that really stands out with lovely headphones. While the bass with these is great, that cymbal really is hidden to me. It's only because I'm listening out for that I can hear it. Whereas with other headphones, it was a fun detail that would leap out at me that I never even realized. But that's not even why I don't like them, because they still sound cool. Very 80s. <laughs> some prints on with these and you're, you're having a really fun listening session. All my mates who tried them love them, even though they did also mention that they're on the darker side. You know, no wonder why these have such a following and they've been making them for like nearly 40 years now. It's the build quality, they're made out of garbage. <laughs> You can tell they haven't changed these since the 80s because they're still using the old school ways to save money with plastic parts. Look at their inside. It's like a Kinder Egg toy. They feel so fragile. I absolutely hate this headband. Like it keeps springing back and it, it pulls your hair out. Jim, it plucks hairs out of your head. So yeah, they fold up tiny, but like, What's the point if you break them putting them into your backpack? But everyone loves these because they say they're cheap. Oh, they're cheap, all right. Yeah, in build quality, fit and finish. Oh, you meant in price. <laughs> No way! Go to Costa's site and they want 50 US bucks for these. Luckily, Amazon offers cheaper prices, but still, look at this horrible cable. It's 80s nasty that never went away. You could get a set of Super Luxes and some KB ears for the set of these. But it's more damning when I put down these. Funny enough, the spiritual successor to the Porter Pros by Cost themselves. Now, this is a modern way of making cheap goods. It's still plastic fantastic, but the finish is so much better. The headband is faster 
superior. Like, the, the Porta Pros look cool. They're so ugly, it's great kind of thing. But I think the KBH 30Is look awesome. Wow, what a difference. For how lightweight they are, you don't expect the kind of sound out of them that they've got. God, they really do weigh nothing. They're built so much better. And what? They cost less than the Porter Pros? Right, so they're cheaper, better sounding, better built, and they even have a microphone. So like, I'm at the backflip tournament still. Oh, I thought I'd just double down and just head out there and just start flipping my phone, you know? See if anyone thinks I've got a talent. And like, I thought it was going pretty good until someone yelled out, like, get off the field, you you know talent bum. Uh, and like, it turned out it was my long lost dad. Like, I hadn't seen him in 15 years. Uh, so it was amazing to see him again and just, just it's crushing my right? hang on. I still think the KZs and the KBs, like they have way better mics. I wish these had more swivel to them. I got a really big stupid head. But awesome little touch here with the metal stress relief. But honestly, these are the thinnest wires I've ever seen on a pair of headphones. <laughs> I really mean that. But hey, they're built so much better than the Porter Pros. I really do prefer the sound and even the look, to be honest. It's got a mic, all for a lower price. But you can love your Porter Pros, they're classics. It's all fun, but they're not cheap. And finally, some software. All the headphone graphs I've used are from Sonarworks. And what you do is you just select the headphones from their list. Hit the on button and boom, perfectly flat headphones. Like this is awesome for content making. And if I showed a graph in this episode, then it's in the software all ready to use. They're all ready to go at the press of a button, not sponsored. I've been a happy customer for years now and I run my stunning k 812 through it while editing these awful, awful videos. So to summarize, super luxes. It's nuts how good something can sound for so little. Being cheap where they can, but nailing it where it counts. Legit, if you work for a school and you need piles of good headphones, these are a total go-to. I do prefer the Samsons, but if it's the case of it's either you can only afford these or you don't get anything at all, totally get these. These are excellent. I find these fit just a little bit nicer. I preferred the sound just a little bit. They cost a little bit extra, but they're built a little bit extra. AKG K52s, I mean, fun, closed back option and just really comfortable, built really nice. I do recommend these, especially if you see them on Super Special or something like real cheap. I prefer open backs for critical listening, but I can understand understand why so many of you out there love these. If you want the open back vibe that isn't quite as big and bulky, you know, these were great. You know, a lot of people rave about these. Mate, it's got that microphone. Yeah, just be careful with the cables, that's all. And yet, yeah, people mod them by changing the ear pads and things. Yeah, nice one, Kos. KZs, KBEs, I think a set of these is just a great staple to have in the house. You know, the earplugs when you need them, great microphones, awesome sound, and like 20 bucks while being endlessly customizable and repairable, no bad batteries to charge. Like, my musician friends have been using these, like, legit as actual on-stage monitors for years, way before this channel even started. And if you want to jump in and get, like, the real critical listening vibe, 58Xs paired to a BTR5 is just the genius little device. Get a balance cable since those are so cheap for these Sennheisers and then like you'll literally be listening like a budget conscious king. Yes, this is the most expensive combo, but like compared to how expensive you can go, this is amazing. This video was huge for me. I can't mention too many headphones, but other close back suggestions. DT770s, the 80 ohm version is great. It's a nice little middle ground. It, it can run out of a laptop. People rave about the Philips SHP 9500s. Catchy name, boy. I haven't tried them personally. There's so many headphones out there, you know, like mono price and hi fi and all that. But you know, don't be afraid to make the jump. Headphones don't go out of date like games and phones do. I mean, the HD 600s are from 1997. And if you get them and they're not what you're hoping for, don't be discouraged as that's what this hobby is all about. Finding what you love about sound and experimenting. It's fun hearing how different music can sound out of different equipment. But most importantly, and I, I don't hear this mentioned enough, just enjoy your music. Doesn't matter what it is or what you're playing it out of 
or where you are, like music's meant to be enjoyed. Even if all you got is a set of dirty buds and a thrashed out MacBook Air, sit down and enjoy it. And hopefully I've made this genre just a little bit less scary and you can enjoy S Club 7 like the rest of us. But that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Huge thanks to my patrons, especially these stinky names right here, because one dollar a month, I direct your videos. And I know a lot of you is really just hang out for the little Frank bit at the end of the videos. Right, so this one's for you guys. We're gonna have a sit down interview with Franklin. It's been a little while since the last one. So See what Frank's been up to, how many poos she's done, not many. And uh, yeah, it should be nice and fun and relaxing. So, thanks so much, mate. I'll see you all next time. Look how long Frankie is. Whoa, what a big lady. Oh, is there a bum in the water? No, mm, nearly. Oh, come on, Frankie, give us a lick. Hey, give, give us a lick. Yeah, give, give us a lick. Get rude.